This is the second part of our introduction to probability theory worked example. So the, the question we were working on is this continuous random variable x has this uh, probability density function. In the quest, in the previous part, we were asked to find out what k was, and we found out it was 30. We sketched the graph. I have a copy of it here, I think. There we go. That's the sketch of it. And uh, I, we calculated the expected value of x and the variance of x. Okay, just a sort of quick remark. Uh, not that it's actually relevant to this calculation, but these are um, always well worth knowing. The expected value of x is the integral of x times f of x, that's the probability density function, uh, from uh, whatever it is. In this case, it's 0 to 1. Okay. Um, all, all those sort of formulas are incredibly important, so just even though they're not relevant now, uh, they're always worth mentioning. So that's as far as we got. So where we're picking up is here. Show that the probability of x less than or equal to one third is 17 over 81. Okay. So essentially, what we have to do here is this is about one third here. Okay. We have to compute this probability, the the, the probability of x less than or equal to one third. Actually, I just checked that it's one third. Yeah. So this is a one third here. Okay, and what we are asked to do is calculate the probability of it being less than one third. Now, the trick here is that the total area under the curve equals one. Okay, uh, so but how did we know? How do we sort of usually uh, solve that integration? Okay, so that's what we're going to do again. Okay, the area under the curve from zero to one third is essentially the probability of um, x being less than one-third. So probability of x being less than one-third is the integral from zero to one-third of kx squared one minus x to be squared dx. Okay, sorry, and in the last question we found that x was 30, so let's just write that again. Uh, I'll take the 30 outside as well because it's constant. So it's x squared uh, 1 minus x to be squared dx. Uh, what we can do is simplify that, that expression there, the integrand, that part. Okay. Uh, we can sort of say that it, that is equal to 30, 0. Uh, x squared uh, minus 2x cubed uh, minus x to the power of 4. Okay, and so that is gives us uh, the the basis of our answer, and so essentially that's how we do it there. Integrate that. So let's do that. That is equal to thirty. I, I, I'm keeping the thirty out here separately, but it's part of the overall answer. Uh, X power of three over three minus. 2x to the power of 4 over 4 minus x to the power of 5 over 5. Okay, and we evaluate that from 1 third to 0. Okay, so first off, we evaluate uh, this expression in here, uh, where and let x equal to 1 third. So, a little bit of calculator work, we would find that to be. 30 over 1 third cubed further divided by 3 okay minus 2 uh, times 1 third x to the power of 4 all over 4 do you know what what we'll do there is simplify that as 2 over 4 as 1 over 2 and finally, uh, I've dropped the sign here actually also, that should be a plus there, so just in case you wonder what happened there, that should be a plus sign. One third over x to the 5 
or a one third to the power of five over five. Okay, we could disregard the zero terms because if we evaluate that that expression that I have underlined that with red with zero, we just get all zero. So it's just minus zero for the rest of it. Uh, let's try and sort of uh, simplify this before we get into number crunching. Essentially, what we have here, the question asks us to demonstrate that this is uh, seventeen over eighty-one. Okay, so that is thirty. So we're trying to sort of keep things as a fraction, essentially. So let's just do that there. Um, my pen is jet. Oh, there, there we go. The what I'm going to do is actually express that first expression as uh, one over three to the power of four, and minus a half times uh, one over three to the power of four. Okay. So let's just be clear. This is that expression there. I'm sort of splitting this up into two. The half I treat separately, and the one third over four is one over I treat to the power of four. Okay. And finally, the one I'm going to sort of split this up a little bit more. Uh, so I have one times five, one over five, times one third, times one over I treat to the power of four for that last expression okay and that should be a plus there as well actually sorry okay now I'm a little bit out of shot there so I'm just gonna let you take stock of what I've uh, just done there so essentially what I have is one-third common in each expression okay so I, I've just been extremely careful so what I'm gonna do is actually take out the one uh, treat one uh, the take out treat to the power of four Okay, and one over three to the power of four, uh, one minus a half plus uh, one over fifteen. Okay, now we're do dealing with something much more manageable. Okay, one over three to the one over three to the four is one over eighty-one. So thirty times that is thirty over eighty-one. So just to be clear, all this expression here comes that uh, 1 minus a half plus 1 over 15 that is 17 over 30 okay so 30 over 81 ti uh, times 17 over 30 there we go 17 over 81 okay so what helps there is essentially just being very careful with these fractions here. Uh, this is actually worth repeating actually. So I had one third over three and I made that one over three to the four and I kept that consistent throughout the whole way so I had one, one, uh, one, one over three to the power of four and had that re expressed that there and I kept the half separately. Okay. Uh, I had at the last expression there I had one over three to the power of five. Let's see if I've got any different colour markers here. No. So I had one third to the power of five. So I expressed that as one third times one over three to the four and it kept the um one over five separately. So it's just uh, taking out all the common terms and just like sort of aggregating them and so on. Okay, so the answer we get is 17 over 81. Okay, now the next let's uh, the next question. Now I took my time with that because that was the it looks easy enough, but that's fertile ground for slip ups, bad slip ups. So that's why I was very uh, careful throughout. Now uh, a random sample of five is taken from this distribution. Find correct four decimal places the probability that all five observations exceed one third. What is the probability of exceeding one third? So that is probability of x being greater than or equal to one third. Now it's a continuous distribution so we can sort of um, uh, express exceeding one third as one over three. Okay and that is 1 minus 17 over 81 okay and what's the power uh, so these are f independent events okay so we're going to call that probability of uh, a and 
the independent events, what's the probability of A happening five times? Well, if it's an independent event and happens five times, it is simply 1 minus 17 over 81 to the power of 5. Little bit of calculator work, nothing to be too uh, stressful with. That would be equivalent to 64 over 81 to the power of 5. Okay, calculator work, not point three zero seven nine. That's the answer. That is actually a short enough question, this part here. Okay, you might notice it actually in the, in the context of how many marks it was given. That was given eight, this was given three. Okay, find correct four decimal places, the variance of the, set of the mean of uh, a random sample of five. Okay, now... This is requires a bit of knowledge to do with sampling distributions. Okay, let's get to a blank page there. Sampling distributions. Okay, and the variance of a sample of size n is simply variance of x over n okay this is actually a very straightforward one here it's uh, sorry just as a sort of quick remark this uh, came this value here came from part one in part one we found that the variance of x was 1 over 28 okay that was in the previous uh, question so here 1 over 28 divided by 5 is 1 over 140 okay uh, expressing to several couple of whatever decimal places that be not point not not seven one four. Okay, correct to four decimal places. I've written it there to five decimal places when you divide um, uh, one by one hundred and forty. Anyway, the quick just a sort of quick remark there. What do you sort of have to check there? That's the thing called the sampling distribution variance. This is a variance of a sample of size n when you know the variance of the variable and just divided by the sample size. That's two short questions there at the end. Okay, just in case you thought we we're going to take all day with this. Okay, bye.